ಶ್ರುತಿಸ್ಮೃತಿಪುರಾಣ ಆಲಯ ಕರುಣಾಲಯ ನಮಿ ಭಗವತ್ಪಾದ ಶಂಕರ ಲೋಕಶಂಕರ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ರಿವೈಸ್ ದ ನಾಮಸ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ವಿ ಗೋ ಟು ಟುಡೇಸ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯವರ್ಯ ನಮಃ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾನಂದ ಪ್ರದಾಯಕಾಯ ನಮಃ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಜ್ಞಾನ ಪ್ರದಾಯಕಾಯ ನಮಃ ಅಜ್ಞಾನತಿಮಿರಾದಿತ್ಯಾಯ ನಮಃ ಸುಜ್ಞಾನಾಂಬುಧಿ ಚಂದ್ರಮಸೇ ನಮಃ ವರ್ಣಾಶ್ರಮ ಪ್ರತಿಷ್ಠಾತ್ರೇ ನಮಃ ಸ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ನಮಃ ಮುಕ್ತಿ ಪ್ರದಾಯಕಾಯ ನಮಃ ಶಿಷ್ಯೋಪದೇಶ ನಿರತಾಯ ನಮಃ ಭಕ್ತಾಭೀಷ್ಟ ಪ್ರದಾಯಕಾಯ ನಮಃ ಸೂಕ್ಷ್ಮತತ್ವರಹಸ್ಯ ಜ್ಞಾಯ ನಮಃ ಕಾರ್ಯಕಾರ್ಯ ಪ್ರಬೋಧಕಾಯ ನಮಃ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಮುದ್ರಾಂಚಿತಕರಾಯ ನಮಃ ಶಿಷ್ಯ ಹೃತ್ತಾಪಹಾರಕಾಯ ನಮಃ ಪರಿವ್ರಾಜಾಶ್ರಮೋರ್ಧತ್ರೇ ನಮಃ ಪರಿವ್ರಾಜ್ಯಾಶ್ರಮೋರ್ಧತ್ರೇ ನಮಃ ಸರ್ವತಂತ್ರ ಸ್ವತಂತ್ರ ಧಿಯೇ ನಮಃ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಸ್ಥಾಪನಾಚಾರ್ಯ ನಮಃ ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ಶಂಕರ ರೂಪಧೃತೆ ನಮಃ ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ಶಂಕರ ರೂಪಭೃತೆ ನಮಃ ಷಣ್ಮತ ಸ್ಥಾಪನಾಚಾರ್ಯ ನಮಃ ತ್ರಯೀ ಮಾರ್ಗ ಪ್ರಕಾಶಕಾಯ ನಮಃ ವೇದ ವೇದಾಂತ ತತ್ವಜ್ಞಾಯ ನಮಃ ದುರ್ವಾದಿಮತ ಖಂಡನಾಯ ನಮಃ ವೈರಾಗ್ಯ ನಿರತಾಯ ನಮಃ ಶಾಂತಾಯ ನಮಃ ಸಂಸಾರಾರ್ಣವತಾರಕಾಯ ನಮಃ ಪ್ರಸನ್ನ ವದನಾಂಭೋಜಾಯ ನಮಃ ಪರಮಾರ್ಥ ಪ್ರಕಾಶಕಾಯ ನಮಃ ಪುರಾಣ ಸ್ಮೃತಿ ಸಾರಜ್ಞಾಯ ನಮಃ ನಿತ್ಯ ತೃಪ್ತಾಯ ನಮಃ ಮಹತೇ ನಮಃ ಶುಚಯೇ ನಮಃ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದಾಯ ನಮಃ ನಿರಾತಂಕಾಯ ನಮಃ ನಿಸ್ಸಂಗಾಯ ನಮಃ ನಿರ್ಮಲಾತ್ಮಕಾಯ ನಮಃ ನಿರ್ಮಮಾಯ ನಮಃ ನಿರಹಂಕಾರಾಯ ನಮಃ ವಿಶ್ವ ವಿಶ್ವವಂದ್ಯ ಪದಾಂಬುಜಾಯ ನಮಃ ಸತ್ವಪ್ರಧಾನಾಯ ನಮಃ ಸದ್ಭಾವಾಯ ನಮಃ ಸಂಖ್ಯಾತೀತ ಗುಣೋಜ್ವಲಾಯ ನಮಃ ಅನಘಾಯ ನಮಃ ಸಾರಹೃದಯಾಯ ನಮಃ ಸುಧಿಯೇ ನಮಃ ಸಾರಸ್ವತ ಪ್ರದಾಯ ನಮಃ ಸತ್ಯಾತ್ಮನೇ ನಮಃ ಪುಣ್ಯಶೀಲಾಯ ನಮಃ ಸಾಂಖ್ಯಯೋಗ ವಿಚಕ್ಷಣಾಯ ನಮಃ ತಪೋರಾಶಯೇ ನಮಃ ಮಹಾತೇಜಸೇ ನಮಃ ಗುಣತ್ರಯ ವಿಭಾಗವಿದೇ ನಮಃ ಕಲಿಘ್ನಾಯ ನಮಃ ಕಾಲಕರ್ಮಜ್ಞಾಯ ನಮಃ ಕಾಲಧರ್ಮಜ್ಞಾಯ ನಮಃ ತಮೋ ಗುಣ ನಿವಾರಕಾಯ ನಮಃ ಭಗವತೆ ನಮಃ ಭಾರತೀ ಜಯತ್ರೇ ನಮಃ ಶಾರದಾಹ್ವಾನ ಪಂಡಿತಾಯ ನಮಃ ಧರ್ಮಧರ್ಮ ವಿಭಾಗ ಜ್ಞಾಯ ನಮಃ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಯ ಭೇದ ಪ್ರದರ್ಶಕಾಯ ನಮಃ ನಾದಬಿಂದು ಕಲಾಭಿಜ್ಞಾಯ ನಮಃ ಯೋಗಿ ಹೃತ್ ಪದ್ಮ ಭಾಸ್ಕರಾಯ ನಮಃ ಅತೀಂದ್ರಿಯ ಜ್ಞಾನ ನಿಧಯ ನಮಃ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಿತ್ಯ ವಿವೇಕವತೆ ನಮಃ ಚಿದಾನಂದಾಯ ನಮಃ ಪರಕಾಯ ಪ್ರವೇಶ ಕೃತೆ ನಮಃ ಅಮಾನುಷ ಚರಿತ್ರಾಧ್ಯಾಯ ನಮಃ ಕ್ಷೇಮದಾಯಿನೇ ನಮಃ ಕ್ಷಮಾಕರಾಯ ನಮಃ ಭವ್ಯಾಯ ನಮಃ ಭವಾಯ ನಮಃ ಭದ್ರಪ್ರದಾಯ ನಮಃ ಸೊ ದೀಸ್ ವರ್ ದ ಸೆವೆಂಟಿ ನಾಮಸ್ ದಟ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಟು ರಿವೈಸ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ವಿ ಎಂಟರ್ ಟುಡೇಸ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಸೊ ಟುಡೇ ವಿ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಸೆವೆಂಟಿ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ನಾಮ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಭೂರಿ ಮಹಿಮ್ನೆ ನಮಃ ಅಣಿಮಾ ಮಹಿಮಾ ಲಘಿಮಾ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಆಸ್ ಸಿದ್ಧೀಸ್ ಅಷ್ಟ ಸಿದ್ಧಿ ಭೂರಿ ಮಹಿಮಾ ಯಸ್ಯ ಸಹ ಒನ್ ಹೂ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಅನ್ಲಿಮಿಟೆಡ್ ಎಕ್ಸಲೆಂಟ್ ಮಹಿಮಾ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಥಿಂಗ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮಹಿಮಾ ಮಹಿಮಾ ಈಸ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಅಷ್ಟ ಸಿದ್ಧೀಸ್ ಮಹಿಮಾ ರೆಫರ್ಸ್ ಟು ಅನ್ ಟು ಸರ್ಟನ್ ಅನ್ಕಾಮನ್ ಆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಡಿವೈನ್ ಆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ನಾವು ಅವರ್ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಶಂಕರ ಭಗವತ್ಪಾದ he has performed a lot of divine acts when he was when he is living and when he, even today people who worship worship him who were his devote devotees see some of the kripa of acharya through the anima siddhi we saw yesterday that he did a parakaya pravesha now here the mahima siddhi is being told mahima siddhi is because of the mahima siddhi he could he could attract or control narmada nadi inside his kamandalu when she was in flood situation and because of the mahima of our acharya 
he is considered as brahma vishnu maheshwara himself guru brahma guru vishnu the shloka is there all of us know it. so it is the greatness of acharya <coughs> the glory of acharya which makes us which makes him a parag brahma vastu himself so if we meditate on him it is as good as meditating on para brahma vastu that is the mahima which we are talking here so he has unlimited glories to his name bhuri mahim ne namaha the next nama is vishwaranjaka yanama vishwam ranjayati iti vishwaranjaka <coughs> now he our adi shankaracharya he he is delighting the whole universe how does he delight the whole universe when he is blessing his devotees or his ashraya datas people who take refuge in him what does he do so yesterday we we said that he is a bhagavan what are the traits of a bhagavan in the prabodha sudhakara which is a grantha it is told that anugraha vasare ayam uttamaha ayam adhamaha jatya rupena sapada vayasa shlagyo ashlagyo vetha Shlagyo ashlagyo vetham navetti bhagavan anugraha vasare. Navetti bhagavan. Bhagavan does not consider I am uttamaha, I am adhamaha, I am jatya uttamaha, rupena uttamaha, sapada uttamaha, vayasa uttamaha, vayasa adhamaha, rupena adhamaha, jatya adhamaha. All these things. The Ucha Nicha Bhava is not at all considered by a person like Shankara Bhagavad Pada during the time of Anugraha, when he blesses everybody. Whether somebody is to be praised or he should not be praised, nothing matters to our Acharya. What he does, he blesses everybody impartially. That is why he is Vishwaranjakaya Namaha. He delights everyone by guiding the people to the right path, which is his job. That is the import of this Nama. Next Nama is Svaprakashaya Namaha. Svaprakashaya Namaha. In the 15th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Yada dityagatan tejaha jagadbhasayate kilam yachandramasi yachagno tatejo vidhimamakam. That is what Bhagavan says. What does Bhagavan says? Yada dityagatam tejaha. So this sun, which is giving light to the entire earth or the solar system or the universe, the brightness of the moon, the light which is, which, which is coming from the Agni, all these illuminations, please know it as mine. That is what Bhagavan says. That means these illuminations are coming from Bhagavan. That is what is 15th chapter, this shloka says. Now Shankara lived with this bhava. So he was, that is why he is called as Svaprakasha Yamaha. He was self luminous. So one of this is one of the ways of interpreting this Nama. The other way of interpreting this Nama is he is an Atma Jnani, a Atma Jnani who is always engrossed in Brahma Vastu. So one who is engrossed in Brahma Vastu, he is none other than Brahman himself. So, he, a Brahman has got Svaprakashaya Namaha. Therefore, the meaning is obeisance to Shankaracharya, obeisance to Shankaracharya, 
who is none other than the Brahman, the self-luminous entity. That is how is the second interpretation of this now. Tadadhara Yanamaha, Tadadhara Yanamaha. Tad, Sadadhara, here also two interpretations is possible. Acharya's avatara was at a time when the Avaidika Matas were prevalent. So Acharya had to give the right path to people who came to him. So everyone who came under his refuge or became or he became the resort to everyone who wanted dharma, who wanted the right teaching. Therefore, he is called as, he became the support of all beings. Sadadhara Yanamaha. This is the first interpretation. Sat Eva Adharaha Yasya. The second interpretation is Sat Eva Adharaha. For one, for whom knowledge, Sat is the refuge. Vishwa Bandhave Namaha. Vishwa Bandhave Namaha. Vishwa world Bandhu let. So one who is a relative of the entire world, relative to all, well-wisher of all, who is a bandhu, one who protects us during difficult times. A relative is a person who protects you during difficult times. How does Acharya protect us during difficult times? Even today, how does he protect? protect? He protects us through his granthas. He has written an Ekashloki one shloka which gives Jnana Upadesha from one shloka to Prasthanatraya Bhashya. So that is the range of texts or compositions that he made. He covered everyone at all stratas of the society. For the children, he has interesting shlokas like Mudakarata Modakam Sadavi Mukti Sadhakam. For the children, Ganapati Stotra. For the house wife people, the Striyaha, Saundar Lahari, Shiva Shaktya Yukto Yadi Bhavati Shakta Prabhavitum. These kind of shlokas he has just done. For the learned people, he has done Viveka Chudamani Grantha, Prakarana Granthas. For the scholars, he has done Brahma Sutra Prasthana Trayabhasya. People who want to look for. So, like that, he touched all people in the society through his granthas, and that is why he is a relative to all, he is a well wisher to all. If you want a solution to a problem during difficult times, open Shankaracharya's granthas, shlokas, read them, you will find a solution in them. Shubho Daya Yanamaha. This is a very interesting Nama. Shubha Udaya. Udaya means that. Rising Turyo Daya, we say no Udaya rising. Now, what is Shubho Daya? Here, Udaya is referring to the incarnation of Adi Shankara Bhagavad Pada. He is said to be an incarnation of Bhagavan Shiva. And how was his incarnation? How did his incarnation take place? Shubho Daya Yanamaha. It happened in an auspicious way, it happened in an auspicious time to Aryamba and Shiva Guru. Lagne Shubhe Shubhayute Sushuve Kumaram Striparvati Vasukini Shubhavikshit Shubhavikshite Cha Bharya Sati Shiva Guru Nijatunga Samste Surye Kuje Ravisute Cha Guru Cha Kendre. This is the shloka in Shankara Vidya. Shankara Vidya. Now, at an, in an auspicious Lagne Shubhe Shubhayute Sushuve Kumaram, our Shiva Guru's wife Aryamba, she gave birth to a Kumara, just like how Parvati gave birth to Subramanya. And at what time she gave birth? How was the birth time? Vaishakha. Masa, Shukla Paksha, Panchami Tithi was the Shubha Dinam. And during Shankara's birth, his, his uh, Lagna, etc., the positions of the planets, the planetary positions was very auspicious. 
Surya, Angaraka, Shani, Brihaspati. They were all in upswing, in the sense. They were all in Uchastanas. So, that is the kind of auspicious birth of Shankaracharya, which, 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 which took place in that time. Now, today also, we celebrate Shankaracharya's birthday as Shankara Jayanti, World Philosopher's Day. Today also, why do we celebrate his birthday today? Because for Shubha Kalyana, Shubhodaya, we want that his incarnation, by reading his slokas of incarnation, the shloka which I told previously, Lagde Shubhe, Shubhayute, Sushuve, Kumaram, these shlokas when you recite, we, we aspire for positive energy and we aspire that the negative energy be reduced. That is what is the purpose of celebrating Shankara Jayanti. Innumerable devotees have felt the transformation. For example, we are doing this Shankara Ashtotra Shatanama during this Shankara Jayanti only. This itself is a transformation, shall create transformation in all of us. So Shubho Jayayanamaha, his incarnation, when it happened, it happened in an auspicious way and auspicious time. Today also his incarnation is happening in all our houses, in all our hearts. We, we meditate upon Shankaracharya and we incarnate him inside, our, inside us. So his incarnation, his presence bestows auspiciousness on his devotees. That is why he is called as Shubho Dayayanamaha. The experience that you will get when you read this Ashtotra Shatarama and when you read his Charitam or when you read his Shlokas or when you do Parayanam of his Granthas or when you do Parayanam of his Bhashyas, that experience is, is inexplainable, is amazing, is superb, is transformation, transformation, transformational. It can create transformation in you. It can induce a new energy in you. It will give you a purpose of life, which is very auspicious for us. Shubho Daya Yanamaha. Whatever we aspire for, we will get by thinking about his incarnation and by, by traveling the path which he has given to all of us. Vishala Kirta Yenamaha obeisance to Shankaracharya, whose fame is vast, great and wise fresh. What is the Vishala Kirti? How did he get so much of Kirti? He traveled from Kashi to Kanyakuma, uh, Kashmir to Kanyakumari to spread Advaita. He did Sarvagya Pita Rohana. He became famous. He reached the masses, as I told you, through his works. Bhashya for Panditas, Prakarana Granthas for, for the Grihasthas to in order to reach the goal. Stotra Granthas in order for the Shanmata Sthapana, the six paths of devotion, which captures the essence of the Shastras, Bhashyas, Vedas, etc. His philosophical legacy that he left, his imprint is there even today for generations to come. Though he disappeared at that time, at the age of 32, he disappeared in Vedarna. That's what people say. But his Kirti, Vishala Kirta Yenamaha, his Kirti has spread very widely. Vagisha Yamaha, Vachaha Ishaha Vagishaha. This Vagisha is a name for Shankaracharya, for Brahma and Brihaspati. Brahma is the husband of Saraswati. Brihaspati is the Acharya for the Devas. So he is equal to Brahma and Brihaspati. That is one meaning. The second meaning is he had knowledge of all the branches of Vedas. Vedanga, Shastra, Spruti, Shruti, Spruti, Purana. He could defeat opponents by his Vada. Trayi Marga Prakashaka Yamaha. Because why did he why did he do arguments with, the, with his opponents? He wanted to establish the true meaning of the Vedas. People were distorting the meanings of the Vedas. So he wanted to establish the true meaning of the Vedas. Therefore, he is called as Vagisha. He himself was a Paramartha Tattva. 
His Brahma Sutra Bhashya was appreciated by Vyasa himself. He also composed Vishnu Sahasrama Bhashya, Lalita Trishati Bhashya, in which he has spoken dharmic aspects, which acted as a light, which acts as a light to many people. Today also it is available. So he is a real Vagisha. Vagisha means master of Vak speech. That is what is Vak. Vak also uh, is held in different forms. So the, the other interpretation is Vak is held in, in so many forms. Para, Pashyanti, Madhyama, Vaikari. Vaikari. Now the Para and the Pashyanti type of Vak is inside the Sukshma Sharira, is in a subtle form. And it can be experienced only by yogis in meditation, in high level of meditation. The Madhyama is the middle stage which some people can experience, whereas the Vaikhari Vak, which is the final stage of Vak, is the Vak which we are speaking. Vaikhari Vak is the Vak which you and I speak. So our Shankaracharya was a master of all these four levels of Vak, Para, Pashyanti, Madhyama, Vaikhari. And he was a master. He could control and express speech as required. That is why he is called as Vagisha Yanamaha. Sarvaloka Hitotsuka Yanamaha. Obeisance to Shankaracharya, who is always keen on ensuring welfare to all the beings in the world. Sarve Lokaha. Sarva Loka. Sarva Loka. Sarva loka nam hitam. Tadrsha hitasya utsukaha Shankaracharya. How was he interested? How did he ensure welfare? First is he established the authority of Vedas. He said, Yajnas and Yagas has to be performed. Avir Bhagas have to be given to the Devas. Because of his Devas, if you cherish the Vedas, Devas in turn will cherish you and you can be happy. So this, this methodology of doing yagas, he reintroduced. He removed the ignorance of people. He said, not only should we do karma, which is yagas, etc. We should also have bhakti. We do upasana and then through upasana. And we should attain chitta shuddhi. And after we attain Chitta Shuddhi, Jnana, Jnana Padesha will happen. So he removed the ignorance of people. He gave the true essence of the Vedas. He, he spoke about Atma Jnana. He gave a Swarupa of Moksha. Today people are talking about Moksha. I will get Moksha by this way. I will get Moksha by this way. All the Acharyas who spoke about Moksha, they spoke only after Shankaracharya spoke. The first person who gave a Swarupa, a form, as to what is Moksha, what is the state of Moksha, and how it can be attained. All these things were first propounded by Adi Shankaracharya only. Therefore, Sarva Loka Hitotsuka Yanamaha. He understood the needs of every devotee and blessed them accordingly. He has done the maximum good to this entire world by his Granthas, by his philosophical legacy. That is why he is called as Sarva Loka Hitotsuka Yamaha. Kaila Sayatra Samprapta Chandra Moli Prapujaka Yanamaha. Now, one, during one of the Yatras of uh, Shankara Bhagavad Pada to Kailasa, so he establishes Advaita and goes to Kailasa. There he obtains many Shivalingas, which he installed in in, in his ashramas and chetras all over India. And, and each of those lingas are called Chandramoli. So in these chetras, these lingas are, even today they are worshipped. So those lingas are the lingas given by Adi Shankara, Bhagavad Pada. Kanchyam Sri Chakra Rajakya Yantrasthapana Dikshita Yanamaha, very important name. In this name, there are 
few words. First word is Kanchi. All of us know what is Kanchi. Ayodhyama to Ramaya, Kashi, Kanchi, Avantika, Puri, Dwaravati, Chaiva, Saptaite, Mokshadaya, Kaha. There are seven cities or seven uh, places in India which are considered to be Mokshadayaka places. Ayodhya, Mathura, Maya, Kashi, Kanchi, Avantika is Ujjain, Dwaravati is Dwaraka, Puri, Dwaravati, Chaiva. Puri is Jagannath Puri. Puri, Dwaravati, Chaiva, Saptaite, Mokshadayaka. So Kanchi is one of the Mokshadayaka city or Puri or city or a town. Now in Kanchi, what did our Adi Shankara Bhagavad Padacharya do? He Yantrasthapanam. He did a Yantrasthapanam. What is the Yantra he, he consecrated or installed? The Yantra that he installed was named as Sri Chakra Raja Yantra. Sri Chakra Raja. Sri Chakra is the best of the Yantras. Sri Chakra is the king of Yantras. Now, Yantra is a two-dimensional form of Bhagavan drawn on a plate. That is called Yantra. It will have triangles, squares, rectangles, circles. It will have various shapes. This Sri, Chak Sri Chakra this, uh, is, an, is Yantra Raja. It is called as Yantra Raja. So that's why it is called Sri Chakra Raja Yantra. So he established the Sri Chakra Raja Yantra in the temple of Kamakshi in Kanchipuram. What does this Sri Chakra represent? It is a form of Devi and Lord Shiva. Sri Vidya Upasakas, for Sri Vidya Upasakas, they worship this Sri Chakra daily. So it is a Shakta root. As per Shankaracharya, it is the in Shanmata root. If you are a devotee of Devi, you do the puja of Sri Chakra. Now what about other general bhaktas. So why did our Shankaracharya do the sthapana of this yantra there? For the auspiciousness, he was a karunalu. He realized that there was, there, he realized that if the Sri Chakra is established at a place in a temple, the darshan of the Sri Chakra itself shall give all merits for the devotees. Which is why being a Karunalu, Shankara established this Sri Chakra inside the Kamakshi Amman temple. And he was Dikshita in this activity. Dikshita means he was very keen on this activity. Because he wanted to give welfare to the devotees. What is this Dikshita? Let us take the word Diksha, Dikshita. Diksha, refer, Diksha has got two words, two letters. Diksha. D Di refers to Diyate Jnana Sadbhava. Ksha represents Kshiyate Karma Sanchaya. So, Dikshita is a person who grants true knowledge by removing the karmas, by removing the effect of karmas. So, such a person is called Diksha. Through the knowledge only, he removes the effect. He grants true knowledge and by removing the effect of karmas. Diyate jnana sadbhavaha shiyate karma samuchaya. This is the this is the essence of the word Dikshita. So now if you put together all these things into one nama, Kanchyam in Kanchi, Sri Chakra Rajakya Yantra Sthapana, one who consecrated the Sri Chakra Raja Yantra, who consecrated, who was keen in concentrating, who was, who had this great sankalpa in concentrate, consecrating this Yantra. And because of that, by doing that, he is granting true knowledge to all the Bhaktas. And the darshan of the Sri Chakra itself, he gives Mukti. That is what is told in our Shastras. Next Nama is Sri 
ಶ್ರೀಚಕ್ರಾತ್ಮಕತಾಟಂಕತೋಷಿತಾಂಬಾ ಮನೋರಥಾಯ ನಮಃ ಯುರ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಲುಕ್ಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಬಿಗ್ ಬಟ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಸಿಂಪಲ್ ನಾಮ there was a, there is a place called tiruvani kaval in tamil nadu in tiruvani kaval the devi akhilandeshwari the goddess akhilandeshwari was present now this goddess akhilandeshwari appeared in a dream to the acharya and told him or requested him to adorn her two years with a tatanka tatanka is a ear stud today all these people are wearing that earring no like that it is an tatanka refers to an ear stud now what should that tatanka contain that tatanka should contain a shri chakra symbol so that is the dream which shankaracharya had in which he was asked by devi akilandeshwari to adorn her ears with the tatanka of shri chakra so that when people do the darshan of devi the they will get all the benefits and this was the manoratha of devi herself that is one meaning or manoratha yanamaha our shankaracharya had this manoratha that he has to do this for the goddess based on the dream that he got so he fulfilled the wish of the goddess by doing this for her so obeisance to shankaracharya who fulfilled the wish of goddess akilandeshwari at tiruvani kaval by placing a tatanka on tatanka which is nothing but an ear stud on the two years of the devi and this tatanka had shri chakra in in embossed on on it the shri chakra yantra was imprinted on this tatanka so that is why this nama is shri chakratmaka tatanka toshitamba manoratha yanamaha the next nama is shri brahma sutra upanishad bhashya adi grantha kalpaka yanamaha brahma sutras are sutras which are given by vyasacharya there are 555 around 550 i think 550 brahma sutras are there what is the purpose of this brahma sutras they give vedanta gyana the atma gyana the knowledge of the brahman to everybody that is why it is called brahma sutra athato brahma jignasa is the first sutra now this brahma sutra it was like a sutra it is it was like a formula it was like a sutra now our shankaracharya in order to help the devotees help the scholars he composed a bhashya a commentary on this brahma sutra brahma sutra bhashya it is called which expounds the theory of advaita he says the brahma sutra is not all explain advaita only that is jeevatma and paramatma are one so brahma sutra upanishad the upanishads also there are 10 upanishads for which our acharya has written ashya ishakena katha prashna mundaka mandukya aitariya taitreya chandogya brahadaranya these 10 upanishads are called the 10 principal upanishads because these upanishads deal with atma gyana or vedanta and our shankaracharya composed bhashya on them also so brahma sutra upanishad bhashya adi and bhagavad gita bhashya also he has performed he has written he has composed vishnu sahasra bhashya lalita sahasra bhashya lalita trishati bhashya 
all these granthas has been done and profound advaitic texts these are profound advaita te texts as per shankaracharya the same texts uh, even vishishta advaita is also they they write a different commentary uh, this is how see it was shankaracharya who started writing commentaries on these texts first shri brahma sutra upanishad bhashyadi grantha kalpakaya namaha chaturdik Chaturamnaya Pratishthatre Namaha. He established four pitas in four directions. Chaturdik, four directions. Chaturamnaya. Amnaya represents Sanatana Dharma Nuyayi Pita. The pitas which followed Sanatana Dharma, that is Vaidika Dharma. He established those pitas. What was the purpose of establishing those pitas? Dharma Prachara. Dwarak, uh, Badari in the north. Puri in the east, uh, Shringeri in the south, and Dwaraka in the west. These are the four Amnaya Pitas established by our Acharya. Mahamataye Namaha. Mahamataye Namaha, one who has a great intellect, broad intellect. His quality of his intellect was very deep. It, it extent of his intellect was very Visionary in nature. Such was his intellect. Visaptati Mato Chetre Namaha. When Shankaracharya did his avatara, there were so many. So our Ashtotra Karta Vidyarne Swami has counted, looks like he has counted those Avaidika philosophies which existed at the time of Shankaracharya. 72 philosophies he is telling. Visaptati refers to 72. Mataya refers to philosophy. Chetre refers to God. Anything which was Avaidika, which was not according to the Vedas, he dissolved them. He said, no, people should not follow anything that is away from the Vedas. Sarvadik Vijaya Prabhave Ravaha. Now, he travelled three times throughout India by foot from Himalaya to Ramasetu, from Western Ghats to the Eastern Sea. Master, he mastered India. He mastered the Bharata and he went in all eight directions. Why did he go in all eight directions? To spread Advaita to spread the knowledge of Advaita, the philosophy, and to spread the dharma. That was his purpose of going everywhere. Wherever he used to meet scholars, he will have a vada or an argument with them, and he will establish the Advaita dharma. Sometimes those people themselves will become his followers. Sarvadik Vijaya Prabhave Namaha. So he was victorious in all directions. And he traversed in all directions. Kashaya Vasana Peta Yamaha. Kashaya Vasana means Vasana is cloth. As you see the picture on the left side, the color was saffron robes. Saffron robes is an indication of a dress of a sannyasi. It be a single vastra. And Kashaya Vasana Peta. That is the san, sanya, that is what Sanyasamata Ashrama. People have to wear. So Kashaya Vasano Petayam. He was always dressed and he is always dressed in saffron robes. Basma Dolita Vigrahaya Namaha. What is this Basma? Basma is the white ash that you are seeing. It is there on my forehead also. It is called Vibhuti. This Vibhuti, what does it indicate? Vibhuti. It indicates purity and prosperity. It indicates impermanence of this world. Now, our Shankaracharya, he, he was wearing this vibhuti always. Now, as per this Basma Dharana Paddhati, first you have a dry vibhuti. This vibhuti is made from cow and sacred ash, etc. All these things. Dry, dry vibhuti is like just a powder. 
So, first when you use the dry vibhuti, it is applied on the body without mixing water. This is called dhulanam. Dhulanam means apply without mixing water so that the specks of the vibhuti dust basma is spreads in the air and this uh, takes away the uh, negative energy and also the impurities around you any bacteria virus around you will, will go away if you spray vibhuti this is called uddhulanam in those days it was being practiced it is dry the second type of wearing this vibhuti was mix the vibhuti with water and and apply it on to your forehead arms hand just you see the picture there on the hand and on the chest so apply it on the forehead arms and chest and the third piece when you apply them you should apply it in the form of tripundra tripundra means three lines the three lines should be visible three horizontal lines so one who so what is the significance of this one who wears basmadharana in this manner brahma jnana easily comes to him in devi bhagavata grantha and in shiva purana this basma shiva mahapurana this basma is praised a lot in fact in devi bhagavata there is a shloka bhajanat sarva papagnam smaranat cha shiva shivan shivankaram bhajanat sarva papagnam smaranat cha shivankaram basma cheti samakhyatam i think that is what the shloka basma cheti samakhyatam bhukti mukti pradayakam or bhukti mukti palapradam i think bhukti mukti palapradam so it is basma is a bhukti prada and a mukti prada it confer it confer confers the comforts in this world and liberation thereafter basma the two words indicate that that's what say basma cheti samakhyatam bhukti mukti palapradam so such a kind of basma was being worn by shankaracharya he adorned his body with that actually the basma looks nice on shankaracharya whether shankaracharya wears looked nice wearing the basma is one thing the basma looks very nice on shankaracharya See, as we know, he is a Shankaracharya, he is a sannyasi. So, all the sannyasis, there is a Dashanami Paddhati, Sannyasa Ashrama, in Sannyasa Ashrama. Tirtha, Pada, then we have uh, Saraswati. Giri, all these names are being told. Vana, Aranya. Hmm. Now, our Shankaracharya, so there are different levels also in Sanyasa. The Sanyasi will decide at which level he is and he will take the Danda accordingly. It starts with Tridanda first. Vag Danda, Tridanda means Vag Danda, Mano Danda, and Kaya Danda. He has to have restraint over his speech. Restraint over his mind and restraint over his body. So that is why three stars, three danda is what is. Some people have three dandas in their hands. Now, people who have attained a higher level, they have this eka danda. They are called Paramahamsa. So they are given the title Paramahamsa, and our Shankaracharya was a Paramahamsa. So he used to have only one danda. And that danda represents knowledge. So, obeisance to Shankaracharya, who had this danda or a staff. You are seeing that in that picture, there is one danda with the flag there, no? That symbolizes the jnana. 
the other things he, which he had in his hand was kamandalu kamandalu la satkara yanamaha he had a kamandalu in his hand along with that uh, uh, palm leaf which is shown in many of the pictures kamandalu la satkara yanamaha why why that is required it is used by sanyasis to carry water so kamandalu la satkara yanamaha guru bhumandala charya yanamaha this nama is not found in many versions who guru bhumandala charya he is the guru of the entire bhumandala receptor of the entire universe that is the meaning of guru bhumandala charya yanamaha the next nama is bhagavat pada samyaka yanamaha it's a very important name nama shankaracharya is referred to as bhagavat pada in that bhagavat pada word you have a bhagavan there i yesterday i told you who is a bhagavan pada pada is also pada charana mama shri charanaha bhatta padaha all these things we use in sanskrit pada or charana when we use it is used for reverence as a mark of respect so our shankaracharya uniquely had a name which is bhagavat pada what a name it is what a title this is the only title which is unique to shankaracharya only nobody else can have this title or nobody else had this title or even today can have this title bhagavat pada so he is referred to as bhagavat pada vyasa sandarshana prita yanamaha he had his darshan of bhagwan vyasa so the story goes that shri acharya was one day teaching his brahma sutra bhashya to disciples in kashi on the banks of the river ganga when shri veda vyasa came there suddenly in the guise of an ordinary brahmana and debated with shankaracharya on the bhashya on various points in the end our padmapada acharya who was his disciple he sees acharya and uh, acharya shankara and veda vyasa so he realizes through his yogic shakti that that old brahmin is none other than vyasa and he he utters this shloka shankara ha shankara sachat vyaso narayano hari tayor vivade samprapte kinkara kim karonya very beautiful shloka shankara is sachat shankara avatar of shiva and uh, vyasa is the avatar of mahavishnu so both are talking about some subject which is brahma gyana tayor vivade samprapte kim kara kim karome what should i do as a servant what should i do that is what padma pada says when vyasa and bhagavat pada shankara meet in kashi and talk about brahma sutra vyas sandarshan prita yanam avar shankaracharya was extremely pleased I, it is said that this entire discussion took place for over more than 7 days nobody they, they did not take rest at all continuously they started discussing 7 days on this brahma sutra ऋष्य शृंगपुरेश्वराय नम दिस नाम इज नाट फौंड इन सम वर्षन आफ् दि अष्टोत्र टू शंकराचार्य हू इज द लॉर्ड ऑफ शृंगेरी वन अंड वेर वन सैड द हर्मिटेज ऑफ सेज ऋष्य शृंग सौंदर्य लहरी मुख्य बहुस्तोत्र विधायकाय नम now our shankaracharya composed many stotras such as saundar lahari etc so which are the stotras composed by adi shankaracharya you have this link if you click on the link a list of all works by shankaracharya you see all the stotras ganesha pancham ganesha bhujangam subramanya bhujangam shiva bhujangam devi bhujangam 
this entire list is there. Saundarya Lahari Mukhya Bahu Stotra Vidhayaka. Many Stotras have been composed by our Shankaraka. Chatushashti Kalabhigyaya Maha. He, he is a master of all the 64 art forms. Kalas, today it is called as art forms. In those days, Chatur, Chatushashti Kala Vidya techniques, you can say skills. Now, if you go to this site, you can go to this site, which I have indicated here. It is not clicking. So the site uh, name is uh, Sanskrit Samskriti Magazine. Let me see if I can cut and paste it in the browser. Now, this is the 64 Kalas and 14 Vidyas. Gita Vidya, Vadya Vidya, all those things. So, he had a knowledge of all these Vidyas. That's what this Ashtotra says. Chatushashti Kalabhigyaya Namaha. Brahma Rakshasa Mokshadaya Namaha. The another part of Veda of this is Brahma Rakshasa Poshakaya Namaha, Toshakaya Namaha. So the story goes like this. Shankara, a Brahma Rakshasa was residing in a banyan tree and our Acharya goes under the tree for meditation. The Brahma Rakshasa came near him and said, I used to swallow all those who come to the foot of this tree, but you appear with special, you are a special Mahatejasvi. Please stay here for a few days and bless me. So Adi Shankara Bhagavad Pada Acharya, he stayed on there accordingly and delighted the Brahma Rakshasa and removed the curse which he suffered from. So he liberated the Brahma Rakshasa from the curse. He nourished or delighted the Brahma Rakshasa by staying there. Srivan Mandana Mishrakya Swayam Bhujaya Sannuta Yanamaha. Obeisance to Shankaracharya who defeated Swayam Bhu himself, Brahma who had incarnated as Mandana Mishra in a debate. So when Shiva Avatara, when Shankaracharya's Avatara took place, all of us know why it took place. There were a lot of Avaidika Matas. At that time, people were going against the Vedas. So there was a need to re-establish the Vedika Matas. So Bhagavan Shankara or Lord Shiva himself decides to take Avatara as Shankara. And he comes down to earth as an incarnation. Now Lord Vishnu and the Lord Brahma also they came to earth to help our Bhagavan Shiva that is Shankara. So Brahma came in the form of Mandana Mishra. So Brahma Deva incarnate, incarnated as Mandana Mishra and was uh, there in Mahishmati I think that uh, place where he performed yagas and sti uh, as stipulated in the Vedas. And he was he was telling that the sannyasis are there now. They are very lazy people. They don't want to do these karmas. That is why they are saying jnana is the easy way for moksha. Now our Shankaracharya came to his place, did a vada with him, Mandana Mishra Shankara Vada, it is called. And after the Vada, he won over Mandana Mishra in a debate and he took him as his disciple. And later, not only did he win him over, but also his wife, Bhaya Bharati, whom also he wins over. And later, Mandana Mishra becomes his disciple and he is the he is today he is called as Sureshwara Acharya. So Sriman Mandana Mishra Akya. Mandana Mishra Akya means named. He was named as Mandana Mishra. 
Swayambhu. He was a Swayambhu means it refers to Brahma Swayambhu Chaturana Nova. Swayambhu. Brahma. Swayambhu is the name of Brahma. Swayambhu Jaya. Victory over Swayambhu Brahma, who was in the form of Vandana Vishwa. Sannutaya Namaha. And he was, he later he became his disciple and he bowed to him. And so the Vada that Shankaracharya proposed was, we, all of us can do karma, but it should not be, it should be done with a goal of attaining Chitta Shuddhi. Therefore, after Chitta Shuddhi, we get Jnana. That was what our Shankaracharya said. Totakacharya Sampujya Yanamaha, obeisance to Shankaracharya, who was worshipped by Totakacharya. This Totakacharya, as I have already told, he was called as Giri. He was dull witted and he used to do all the physical services for the Guru, like washing clothes with, with great devotion. One day, as he was busy washing the clothes, he was a little late in attending the Pasha class of the Guru. See, the other brighter disciples were disturbed that Shankara Bhagavad Pada was waiting for Giri to come to the class. Oh no. See, in those days, our Gurus waited for such Sishyas to come to the class. Now, knowing that, knowing the attitude of the Sishyas, Bhagavad Pada Shankara, he was a Karunya Murti. He blessed Thota, he blessed Giri with all the Vidyas in a moment, in a second. Immediately, Giri danced his way. He started dancing and uh, he composed this Totakashtakam, which is full of Advaita, and offered his worship to Bhavashankara Deshikamesh Charanam. He offer, offered his worship to Shankaracharya. So, Totakacharya Sampujyayanaha, he who was worshipped by Totakacharya. Because he composed that, that Totakashtakam in Totaka Chandas. So, Totaka Chandas is a very difficult Chandas where you have four Saganas in one line. As per Chandas Shastra, he composed that uh, shloka, which became very, which is very famous now as Totakashtakam. It starts with Vidhita Akila. Shastra Sudha Jaladhe. That is the starting line of the shloka. It ends with Bhava Shankara Deshikame Sharanam. Every shloka ends with that line. So he offered his worship to Shankaracharya and he became to be known as Totakacharya. Who are the other Sishyas of Shankaracharya? We will see in the next class. Tomorrow will be the last class of this course, <clears throat> where we will be studying all the other Namas. Maybe for half an hour, we will study all the other Namas. About eight, uh, eight Namas plus in another version, we have about five or six Namas. So we may be studying about 15 to 20 Namas tomorrow, depending on what is the extra Namas that is found in other Pathas. So, after that, we will go for one uh, we will go for questions, whatever you have. Please don't ask Advaita related questions. What is Jiva? What is Paramatma? What is uh, Brahma Satya, Jagan Mitya? What to explain the meaning of that? Please don't ask those questions because this is not an Advaita course. This is not a fundamental of Advaita. We have courses in Vyoma for fundamentals of Advaita. So, Tattva Bodha is there. We have introduction to Vedanta by Rama Bhagini, Rama Shivaraman. All those courses can be referred. And in one question, I will not be able to answer the entire essence of Advaita. So, let the questions not be focused on Advaita. But the questions can be focused on the Ashtottara Shatanama as it, as it is. 
any questions on ashtotra shatanama will be entertained if you can mail the questions it will in advance it will be very nice please mail it to sanskrit from home uh, at yomalabs.in this is the address so that we can be prepared for the questions we can be prepared with the answers for the question so last we will have time for some feedback 10 or 10 minutes we may have time for some feedback so we can share your feedback on the course tomorrow the entire um can we have the slides please yes so these slides are being posted in the course anybody from the e learning team who is available yes yes sir yes sir ah so the slides are being where are the slides being posted you can tell uh, the, the in the content page sir course course content page so all of you know sanskrit from home dot org please register there in the content page you will have all these slides posted you can refer the slides there you can also there will also be a moola version of the entire ashtotra there are two or three versions found out of this ashtotra uh, we will put two versions of the ashtotra in the site which people can refer and use it for doing puja uh, these are the two things that we will do uh, by tomorrow rest of the things if we do something we will keep you informed uh, we will inform you there will be a test on this course we on the multiple choice question test on this course people who want to take it based on and it will be purely based on what is there in the slide so we will or whatever information i have told if you can digest that as the basic information there will be 25 25 multiple choice questions for this as a, as a assessment for the course people that is voluntary assessment is purely voluntary but if you take you can get a certificate and you can also feel happy that you have mastered the ashtotra so these are some of the uh, guidelines some of which i have told today some some more of these guidelines will be told tomorrow by our e learning team whatever is shall be uploaded shall be uploaded please practice so the the message here is the ashtotra series that we are doing is is a unique concept where we are trying to tell the meaning of these ashtotras so that you can internalize these ashtotras especially the word to word meaning and when you are doing the uh, puja you can experience the bhagavan in a very nice way you can do the puja knowing the meaning that is the purpose of this wherever possible we have split the samasas today i could not split some of the samasas because of lack of time but i will see if all these things can be put in a document and posted there i will explore the possibility please don't ask me when you are going to post those things we will post it you can refer the site after one week to see all those things but imme immediately we will post the slides and the videos and uh, you will have the two versions only the moola without the meaning for doing the puja only the moola will be there for you to practice dhanyavadah swasti prajabhya paripalayantam nyayena margena mahimahishaha go brahmanebhya shubhamastu nityam loka samasta sukhino bhavantu sarvebhya namaskara